Okay, hey guys, so I'm going to show you how to play uh, Ginger Wars. So I got my box of Ginger Wars cards, and let's open it up. Uh, we got six decks of cards, the Ginger Wars, the battle cards here. And we also got uh, six of these rule cards, uh, which are double-sided, so they just have a quick little overview of how to play. Getting started with Ginger Wars, everyone would take their uh, their deck of cards and they'd sort through and pull out their ginger person cards. So they're the ones that can assemble a person. So I'll show you this. So here's my blue ginger person. And then the rest of the cards, I have 15 of these battle cards. they got numbers and letters and they all have different types of attacks, which I'll explain in a little bit. Uh, you'd shuffle these up. Uh, draw a hand of uh, five cards and set the rest to the side of your ginger person. So each player would do this and we'd be ready to start playing. Here we have a setup of a four player game. Uh, this game's up to six players. Um, and so how the game works is on your turn you would pick someone at the table that you want to attack and you would put out your, your attack. So I'm playing as the red player right now and I'm going to attack the purple guy. So I put down my card and the purple guy, he'll just put down anything, so yeah. So he's going to reveal his card, so he's defending with a 5, and I attacked with a 10, so I actually win. So now I can choose a body part of uh, the purple player, and I can take it. So I'm going to take his leg here, and I get to keep that. And then we take our cards, and we put them in our discard pile. So I have that here. Now the object of the game is to be the first player to assemble a brand new ginger person by stealing points, stealing uh, their parts. Um, but now here's a trick. Now that the purple guy's missing a limb, for each limb that he's missing, he can actually play extra cards. So he's a little more powerful for future attacks and defense. So we now will replenish our hands. So I got my thing of four cards, five cards here, and purple guy will do the same and it'll go into blue's turn so blue can go and attack somebody so let's say blue were to attack uh, the orange guy so the orange guy and the blue guy so orange is going to play here so again uh, they both reveal their cards now and we can see the blue guy has one uh, beats that so he does this each take their cards back, and the blue guy is also going to take one of the legs. Last person to have been attacked, in this case the orange player, is now considered desperate. So if anyone were to attack him again, uh, he would actually have the opportunity to possibly steal a piece from that person. So let's say the purple player attacks orange. The orange player, he is going to do this. So they both reveal... So we can see the orange player, he plays a switcheroo, which actually swaps attacks with the purple player. He'd win, and I'll go into more details about the special cards. Um, so because he was desperate, he actually can steal a card from the purple player. So he will do take the leg as well. So now each player, they returns their cards back to their, their decks, and they can replenish their, replenish their hands. So now it's the orange player's turn. He can attack somebody. So let's see. He's going to probably attack. He can attack the red guy. So he's going to play two cards. Um, he could have played two cards last time against purple, but he chose not to. Uh, and the red guy, he can only play one. And he's going to play his redirect. And he's going to say, nope, you're actually going to attack the blue guy. So the blue guy is going to play he's just going to play his six he's only allowed to play one card so we see it and uh, it's eight against six so the orange guy wins so he can steal another leg so he's going to steal the, the right leg uh, before I keep going with the game I just want to explain some of the special cards because they're going to keep coming up in uh, in battle so there's the standard attack cards which have uh, number values of two to ten uh, so those are what you'll see most uh, in your in your decks of cards. Um, but then there's also these specials that I wanted to explain. So we have the milk card. This one's really cool. This one uh, 
it basically can win against any number value cards. So you play a milk against somebody who played a 10 and a 6, what, a 16. So uh, the milk would always win. So that's that's really neat with the milk card is it always wins against any number value cards. Uh, the next one here is an interesting one. This is uh, the raincoat. Uh, so the raincoat's unique in that it loses against any number value card. So you play this against a, someone who just played a 2 and this will lose. Um, but the key with it is it's the only card that can beat the milk. So that's that's pretty handy. So you gotta got to play a little risky when you play that one. Uh, the next one here is the redirect card. So this one you can only play when you're defending. And what you do is you play it and you'd actually point at someone else at the table who you'd be who the attacker would have to attack. Um, so that's kind of good for just playing it safe. Um, if you're playing in just a two player only mode, then it just would cancel that turn and the next player would go. Uh, so the switcheroo, this one's neat uh, in that it swaps your attack with that of the other players and then it will just take on a number value of six. You can see by the little snowballs there. So uh, if somebody played this, uh, played their milk card and you played this, it would act as if you played the milk and they just played a number six or vice versa. Uh, so that's pretty handy for swapping people's attacks. Uh, so those are the special cards and a lot of the key like strategy in the game is trying to keep track of when people are playing their cards and when they're reshuffling their decks so that it comes back into play. So you have to keep an eye on that for each player. Alright guys, so we've had a whole bunch of turns uh, happen here and we're near the end of the game. Uh, so just to give you a bit of a recap, I'm almost uh, done assembling my ginger person, so I'm pretty close to winning. Uh, the blue guy is also pretty close to winning. Uh, he's just missing the head, so between me and him, we're very, we're neck and neck, pun intended. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> that was a terrible joke. Okay, so he was also just recently attacked by the purple guy, so he's desperate. So me being my turn, I want to avoid attacking him because if he wins, he can steal my, my head and that would end the game. Uh, so instead, I'm going to attack the orange guy here and I'm going to play these cards. And now because I'm missing four body parts, I could technically play up to my entire hand. I could play up to five cards. So I'm going to play these four cards and the orange guy, what he would do uh, just to avoid me entirely is he'll play his redirect, which he had in his hand. Uh, so he's going to redirect me to the blue player who's desperate. So the blue player, remember, being desperate has the ability to possibly steal a card from the attacker if he wins. So he's going to play, he's just going to play his switcheroo. Just trying to be clever. So he's going to play a switcheroo and we see what hand the red guy played. So the blue guy won and I'll explain how this happened. Um, me trying to be clever, I played my milk card against the orange guy thinking because he already had his raincoat played I knew he wouldn't be able to uh, beat me with that but I didn't, didn't think about his redirect. So he pointed me to the blue guy. The blue guy played a switcheroo, so that acts as if he played this hand, and I just played a six. So we would ignore these number cards here, because I was just doing that to disguise my milk card in the hand, and he'd actually win with this milk card now. So because he was desperate, he'd get the head, and that would win the game. 